black dress, cocktail, one shot, knock your conscience out. Who just scratched my back? In that case, I would just like to ask you to quickly introduce yourself a little bit and tell us what you do also, not just for me, but as well for the people listening to this. Mm -hmm. um, so my artist name is Nativa and uh, I produce acoustic pop soul music. Um, a lot, I build a lot on harmonies and loops, especially in concerts and live. Nice. Um, now... What we published from you is a song that you published one month ago, if I'm informed correctly. That's correct. Um, tell us a little bit about this song, just in general. What, what is it about? I mean, people that are watching this hopefully watched the video of the song already. But for those that didn't, convince them to, to watch it maybe. What, what can they expect? Oh, um, so this is a song that's extremely special to me because I started it about four years ago. And it's in, it's a very, very emotion heavy, um, <laughs> tension driven song. And because of just how tense I was when I composed it, I had to let it simmer for some years before going back to it with a cool head. Mm. Um, it's called Only Miss You When I'm High. I think that there's a lot that goes in the meaning of it and you can probably take your interpretation of what it's about when you listen to it yeah. um the music video itself actually is has been quite an adventure um because i did not meet the director mm -hmm. face to face when uh, she approached me um it was through a friend of my mar my my manager actually um, that I got in touch with her and she said she really wanted to make a music video for me. And I, at that time, that point in time, I was making a different set of music videos for my first EP. So I was just telling myself, feel free to listen to it, soak it in, uh -huh. go for it. These are the points that I definitely want you to cover though, in terms of tension, mm -hmm. um, in terms of imagery. Um, and what she did was just, really really surprising like in a really positive sense of the term yeah. um with it yeah. it's not the kind of video you can just watch once that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> yes definitely and we will dive deeper into the the music video itself um later on in this interview as well but uh right now i mean uh, you already said uh, you you published some other piece before since how long are you in the music business so i started going solo fairly recently actually, only about mm -hmm. uh, a year and a half ago. I released a first playlist um, on, just on SoundCloud and then I released my first EP officially only seven months ago. Um, and well, actually now I'm thinking about it, huh, can I do the math? <laughs> no, <laughs> it was October, 2020. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like I think yeah. Corona I think destroyed all the math. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> after 2020, all time is just relevant. Yes, <laughs> I completely um, agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, following that release, actually, that was the commencement officially of my solo career. I would say, mm -hmm. um, it's been quite fresh. Before that, I was jamming a lot, and um, I tried out. I played in bands. Um, amateur bands for quite some time but it's only starting last year that I really started to create my own art and put it out there nice and what was your how did you get into music where where did uh, where did this musicality in you come from oh man if I could take you <laughs> if I could <laughs> give you a tour of the house in which I am right now I would um, <laughs> so our whole family is a family of musicians I'm actually in yes. my grandfather's house right now Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm in the very place in which he would compose until like three or 4 AM oh, wow. every night after his retirement. Um, so my grandfather, although he worked, he composed until the day he died. Um, my grandmother was an opera singer. My parents are both pianists. Um, every side of the family has an, <laughs> you basically have to play an instrument. Yeah, otherwise exactly, you kicked I out see. of the family. You can't stay <laughs> it's in the family. Nice. Exactly. But it's always super beautiful for me to see, uh, to meet and talk with people that are where their whole family is so much in the arts. It's it's super beautiful to see always for me and how things carry over generations and how that 
is still being valued by by in that case you now uh, i think it's always super beautiful to see this and then as well their own interpretations you said okay there is there is opera within your family which is obviously very different to what you do oh yeah <laughs> but uh, but it's still music and it still has something in there i think it's beautiful nice oh, thank you what about you and your family uh well my father is an engineer okay not really an like not an artist but still having to do problem solving and things so, uh-huh and do you have a lot looking, of problem solving to do in uh in your circus time well in in the things that i do or i've recently done in the last few years actually yes i've been working uh with some constructing things and balancing and things so it, i do mm-hmm. see parallels uh between those things um but it's not as direct and obvious as in your case obviously uh-huh. where yeah. the artist family okay my my family is not an artist family there was a grandfather of mine who was who was painting mm-hmm. uh, and doing stuff in that direction but yeah. but for sure not an artist family and um but i think that i mean there's get influenced. yeah yeah absolutely there's so many different ways in which you can be creative you know there's yes. a lot of people that I talk to say, oh, I wish I had an artistic side and everything and I could do it with the job that I have. Mm-hmm. No, you can have art. You can create yes. art through the job that you have, at, be, it, uh, be it through an engineering job, be it through business. Yeah. You can also be very creative. It's a lot just about a mindset for me. Like, okay, how do you, how do you approach the task at hand? Mm-hmm. Uh, do you just do it according to the book uh, and just don't really think about it and be a robot? But but who does that? Like most <laughs> people, people are, <laughs> most people are invested into their work. Hopefully, at least, yeah. as well, and are reflecting about it. And uh, that is already an artistic approach, let's say. And uh, art is not the uh, so sterilized. Like not only the things that are in a museum are art. Art can be found in so many different places, and it's such a subjective experience of what is art. And nobody can tell you yes, that is art, and that is not art. And for me, that is something that we should, I believe, get rid of in our society a little bit of labeling certain things art and other things not. And mm-hmm. I think um, it's creating a barrier for people to go into it and to uh, to discover that aspect and that side of theirs as well, which is a pity. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. Um, mm. Actually, this past year, taking speaking of maybe discouraging people to go into the arts, um, looking at the way everything has been, um, how do you say, um, commercialized yeah. and um, monetarized um, in, a, in a way that makes it very difficult, especially for musicians, to, to find a way, a new creative way in order to be um, frugal with their work. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that's a specific push in, in the industry that's now really soaking things out of, uh, of artists. I mean, I'm speaking specifically for musicians. Um, I don't know about the rest of the entertainment industry, but it's really, really draining to yeah. keep up with what is coming out and how mm-hmm. you're supposed to stay relevant and how you're supposed to adapt in order to, um, to support yourself monetary, yeah. monetarily. Can you explain a little bit uh, going into that topic how the situation for you yourself as a creator as a musician is currently with this crisis what uh, what are your personal experiences I mean I'm very fortunate to be among the people who do not rely completely on my performances and on the mm-hmm. on the selling of my um, of my songs in order to in order to survive financially I'm very very fortunate um, especially because I'm starting off I knew that <laughs> I know yeah. it's it's not even it's it's the commencement of what I could hope to be a career in a very unfortunate time. So I need to be pragmatic about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I talk about different when I talk to different artistic friends, I mean, it's been. Um, I mean, some friends of mine got kicked out of where they of, of their homes and had to live with people for, for a while. And uh, well, the friends who took them in very, very luckily um, mm-hmm. or got help from the government very luckily as well um in switzerland in particular it's very difficult right now because um there's quite a lot of pressure being put on the governments to support artists in switzerland Mm -hmm. that was not the case last year or that was the case and it was not really responded Mm -hmm. um so things are starting to look up now but it's it has not been easy 
Yeah. And I'm sure I'm sure that you can see it on your side as well. Yes, for sure. I mean, it's uh, like yesterday I still got an email about, okay, next part of the tour that was planned is canceled. So, and you would imagine you get used to it uh, after all this time now that cancellation of shows and performances are, are becoming normal, but it still sucks. And you are still sitting there like, okay, based on what is still roughly in the calendar, and you look then at the numbers, okay, how much money will I make from those shows? But it's, uh, you're very much in your head and you're very much busy in, uh, about, okay, how am I going to pay my bills the next couple of months? And there is always this uncertainty and this whole situation is incredibly stressful as well of not knowing what will be. I don't know when I will be able to perform again. I don't know when I will have money coming in again. And all those unanswered questions are, are making it very difficult as well to find the calmness and things to be creative uh, because you're constantly kind of on your toes of, okay, I need to be available to say yes to whatever might come. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a very difficult situation in general for, for the entire arts sector, but as well for other industries. It's not only the arts sector. There is, it's a difficult time for, for a lot of people in a lot of different sectors. And uh, of mm -hmm. course, we are people in the arts sector, so we are like, please listen to us. We need support somehow to be able to survive. But um, But there's more people in similar situations as well, and there is no simple solution for all of this it's it's tricky and uh, we have to see how we get out of this but i i hope that um we manage and i think as artists have good chances actually of okay finding creative solutions getting getting to make things work somehow again so i'm mm. i'm still somewhat confident and hopeful <laughs> right now at least that's quite nice Ask me um, again next week in case there's more cancellations. Maybe then, then things will be different again. I don't know. I'll text you. Jacob, yes. how are you holding up? Yeah. Yeah, but exactly um, this, what you just said, I think is, is something really important right now of, okay, do check in with, with your friends and uh, artists, colleagues and things. It's, it's really a moment where we can make use of each other and the network we have. And, uh, you spoke earlier of, okay, friends taking in other people that get kicked out of their home. It's really a moment to to show the strength of the community that we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something very beautiful as well that is happening. That is definitely something that I felt uh, the, at the point in time when the first wave was coming and everything was mm -hmm. closing down, everything was shutting down. There was a lot of uncertainty in the air. Um, I was particularly in Prague, actually, at that point in time where everything was... Mm -hmm rather strict in the month of March. And you really sensed this sense of civic duty and community mm -hmm. and, and responsibility towards one another to really look out for each other and look out for yourself in that you yeah. really were obedient and abiding to the rules and you would help out anybody who was in need, who really needed it, somebody who was vulnerable, like somebody you needed to go shopping for who, because they were 80 plus or um, a person who was who's in a financial difficulty and needed a place to stay or needs 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 some money or some mm. um some form of support at that point in time so i definitely yeah um i'm with you on that yeah. that's a really beautiful thing to see this was the first part of my conversation with nativa in part two, we will be talking about what defines her as an artist, as well as about limitations, continuity and depth in the field of art. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to click like and subscribe to our channel and share your thoughts in the comments below. A big thank you goes out to all of our supporters on Patreon. If you also want to support the work that we do here at Cap de la Vie and secure yourself some extra benefits, then head over to patreon.com slash Cap See you in the next part with Nativa.